I wasn't selling them. I never even sold that many tickets to me. I didn't even sell any tickets to me. My first fight, second, I didn't do. First three fights didn't do well. I never knew what professional boxing was all about when I started off. I thought all you had to do was turn up and fight, but it was a shock to my system, and I fell, a lot, I fell away from a wee bit. But then I ended up, ended up you know, building build myself up and build a bit of fan base up the next year or so. Well, the next few years. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, it's been, it's been going great. We've had a great few. We've been having a great good few years in the last few years. You know. I think this fight's been talked, in, talked about before even I think McGregor was a champion. Before I was a champion, I think he turned pro in 2017. I think I was a Scottish champion. This has been talked about since, and uh, always feel the two best at the weight. That's the reason we're here. That's the fight. That's the reason the fight's happening. And uh, you know, what I mean, two Scottish stars are gonna go out there. When he came, he was he, he was the physical, you know, um, athlete he is now. You know, he's you, know, you can see the muscles and the, the the strength he's brought up. So when he first came, that was the first thing we worked on. But you know, we never envisaged where we would end up. You know, so long every now and again, he would just show. A wee bit of something like this boy is really good, and it just kept going. And every time I took him somewhere else to spar, it just he just seemed to keep getting better and better. And hence why you know we're here now. People are talking about him being you know, you know, European title, potentially world rated. All these all these things. It's you know it's probably like a lot of things that you do in life. Once it finishes, we'll look back and go, that was amazing. I mean, he's won the British title outright. You know, there's very few people. In, in Scotland, you know, in Britain, I mean, you know, Scotland, I've, I've won the belt out right? so unbelievable. Even see if he was to retire tomorrow, which he obviously won't do, but you know, the achievement, what he's achieved so far is, is amazing. It's just consumed with training. All he does is focus on training, um, eat, sleeps, and breathes boxing. If I'm wrong, he's, you know, you probably speak to other coaches and find that the hardest thing they could, you know, is try to make sure the fighters in the gym after fights, you know. Disciplined, motivated, he's actually one of the fighters that sometimes, you know what Cash, have a wee night off and he's like, what? You know, like, he, sometimes you can tell when he's just, he, he, he trains just that wee bit too much, he's he's a different beast, he's just consumed all he'll do is, I'm doing this, he's got his plan for the week, he's a Saturday off and then the rest of it he's, he's consumed with training and, and, and dieting, you know, and focusing on the fight, he's just, just an you know, absolute disciplined athlete. What happened was, uh, it was somebody else who was coaching him at the time and um, that person decided to have a fight and um, asked me to take cash on and I said, you know, he'll need to come here. So fair play to cash two buses and, and four years later we're here, you know. Ah, he's he's an extremely dedicated, single-minded individual. And I think that's shown in you know, uh, where we are now. If I'm being honest, from the day my you know, Lee turned professional, I've been watching him, saying to Cash, we're going to end up fighting him one day. And I've, I've basically been focusing on, um, you know, slightly along the lines, always thinking about that fight along the lines. So in theory, I've been focusing on training for, for Lee for about two years, because I knew it was going to happen. It was just meant to. It's a trade fight, everybody knows it's a brilliant fight. You know, everybody knows both of them are brilliant fighters. It sells itself, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing fight, particularly after the weekend, you know, the Taylor Progre fight. You've had that fight, and now you're, you know, in a couple of weeks' time, you're gonna have, a, you know, another, you know, two Scottish fighters, and a, a, you know, it'll be a fantastic fight. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if we'll end up a contender for fight of the year as well. You know, I think it's, it's got that potential. Um, I see Cash winning. Um, not comfortable with me. I think he'll, he'll be tested a few times. Potentially even, yeah. I think uh, the form the cash is punching has been fantastic. Never know, maybe stop McGregor later on. Uh, it's not out the realms of possibilities. I think cash is that good now. I've had them train all in the country, span with you know world-rated fighters, we want to call them that. So I know how good he is. Um, I think Lee's really good. I think it's maybe just I think the experience and the edge lies with cash, if I'm being honest. Spent for my four most of my years here, you know, and uh, and I, you know, I think I saw in 2011, right up 2015. And I used to come both from sports on the bus to here. I think it used to take me an hour and about 10 minutes every day, and getting back as well. And uh, you know, this is my trainer. I had the gym, and uh, I've been I've been doing that. Well, I won everything here. My Scottish titles, my British represents Scotland in this club, and you know, this was it. This is my life. 
four years ago. I remember taking the bus here. I think I was about four, 15. And I was, ter- I was terrified because I didn't know where I was going. And uh, when I go here, I was so happy, you know. And uh, I didn't my, I met Bobby. That's the first time I met Bobby here. Bobby Kennedy, my old trainer. And, uh, and I was there. And I came back every night. I never missed a night. Never. Since the uh, first night I came to the club, I never missed a night. Christmas, summer, uh, Halloween, bonfire night, every year, every, you know, this part, everything in the year I was here. You know, I was here, I think, three or four times a week. And uh, that was it. My old trainer told me to come here. It was Bobby McDermott that told me to come. That was his old trainer. And that's how I met Bobby Cardi and Davey McGowan. They used to look after me and train me. And, and uh, you know, I really loved it here. It was a great bunch of uh, boys here. The first year was hard, I'll be honest with you, because I used to train at White Inch Community Center. I was just down the road. I think it was five, ten minutes down the road from me uh, by walking. So coming here every day, one hour on the bus and after school, running home, taking the bus, you know, and uh, I would wake up in the morning, go to school, and I'll leave, uh, I'll leave, what do you call school, and come here, and by the time I get home, it'll be like eight, half eight, maybe nine o'clock sometime, and, uh, you know, that was that, you know, and it was really difficult the first couple of months, to be honest, and even the first year, and but after I started winning stuff and started getting the Scottish tie, getting a lot of fights, you know, it just came second nature to me. I think my trainer used to have a van here, he used to put the ring at the back. I don't know, I just know we used to have a white van and we used to, always, used to drop us off, all the boys, well, some of the boys anyway. And, you know, and, uh, and it was because in the winter time it was freezing, yeah, it was only 10 minutes walk from my house and he used to drop us off. And that's, I think that's how I can remember him. He used to give me talks about how boxing can change your life. So, hi. What was it like hearing those stories? Ah, it was great, you know, and uh, you're young, you're always, you're, you're always saying aye, aye, aye to your trainer. But obviously, it makes a big, big difference. You know? I mean, when you look, when you look back now, you know, I, I, I don't get me wrong. I did take in his words, everything he used to say to me. You know, everything he told me, keep away from back, keep, don't do this, don't do that. And I, I did listen to him. You know, always some of the boys didn't bar did. Ah, because I think he obviously uh, he, he he went through a hard patch in his life. You know, in and out of jails, and he always he tried to pass on his knowledge on to the younger generation. And, and I was fortunate enough to listen to him and. I was not going to run into trouble and I was you know. That's yeah, that's right. right, yeah. He should tell me stories just about his life and where he, you know, me represent Scotland and box and, you know, he just, he just trying to educate me about life. I mean, I was only about 15, 16 and just normally made the mistakes he made and, you know, and obviously made, it made a big impact on my life, you know, I mean, it's grown up. Obviously, I looked at it, I was like, I don't want to obviously go down that road, you know, so I. I was going to say, what does he sort of mean to you? Is it- no, I always, he was very, very close. You know, I mean, Robert was really, really close to me, and, uh, you know, he was like a, obviously like a close friend, you know, he was a mentor and everything. So, yeah, I mean, him going really, really well, and anything I advice I need, I always used to go to him, you know. After he passed away, I think I must have had about two amateur fights, and after that, I just wanted to turn professional, and that was it, to be honest, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I know. Tough coming back here. No, it's, you know, I've came here a few times. I've came after the. I've came after my Scottish tail fight and I've came be coming back and forward all the time. Sometimes do a wee session, punch a bag and you know, I enjoy, I actually enjoyed coming back here, so now it's a good wee small club. Cash was a uh, first person here, last person to leave. Commitment. Very quiet. Uh, but real real nice boy at the start, I still a real nice boy. The original coach used to always say he had his eye on him for the start, he knew he had something special. Hopefully it goes strength to strength. That means he's doing well and a few of the boys following his footsteps. Yeah. It's good for them to see, and nobody else, he travelled a long distance at the start. That's see the commitment at the start for it. It's a big thing. A lot of kids don't know what to go out these days, blah, blah, but he came to where he stayed, to here, public transport. As I say, the last to leave, we need a commitment like that, and the boys not. I, mean, I went and studied for a while. I studied in Clydebank College for two years, then I counts, and I think I was still an amateur at that time, and after that, I think I started two years and I turned professional and then and I worked a part time and I tried to do professional boxing and, and I juggled both of them for a while until obviously into my I done that for a while until I got full time sponsor. I think I done for a year and a half, maybe two years. Then uh, I've been full time since, you know. Yeah. Um you worked in Subway as well for a bit? Yeah, I worked for Subway in I think a year and a half. Or a bit longer to be honest. Yeah. I just just so I can I mean, pay a bit of my petrol money and all that type of stuff, you know, so my food and that, so, you know, that, that, that made a big, de- you know, I mean, I, I had to do anyway, so. Yeah. Uh, I'm at Craig Dog's Day, at my trainer's funeral, 
and he's like, I, I think you should turn professional, this and that, you know, and uh, this was I, to made me go, at that time it was called Belcher and Wilson, and, and uh, he introduced me to them, and that was it, I turned professional, and the rest is history, you know. I'll be honest, I wasn't here, I just, I just turned professional, because I think, uh, I just wanted to do it, that was it, I wasn't here, I picked the thing, I, would, I wasn't really interested in anything, and then once I won the Scottish, you know, I thought, that was it, you know, and I just, I just kept on, I just kept on winning and winning, and, you know, and I, train, I always trained hard, I always dedicated myself, that was one thing about me, I always dedicated myself, everything I've done, and, uh, you know, and, that was, uh, you know, I was, I was no reason I turned professional, I wasn't because I wanted to win, I wanted to play or anything like that, you know, I had no back in my turn professional, and, uh, I just, I just kept on going on, you know. We see now, I look back, it's probably one of the best, best probably decisions I've made, you know. Yeah. So I, I think I always wanted to be a boxer, no matter what. I always had in my mind I wanted to be a boxer. Some, I always wanted to, what do you call, it, pursue a career. But I knew how difficult it was gonna be. But, and I just, I just hope one day it might come, you know, me I might get opportunity or something. It might, something might come on the horizon, and I did, you know. Yeah. End up, end up doing no bad as a professional, so. Uh, what was it about boxing that made you sort of fall in love with it? I think, I think you're winning on your own, you're not winning as a team. I'm talking about, no, obviously you've got your trainer and your, obviously your tra trainer and your other trainer, you know. You're winning, but I'm talking about you as a, on your own, you're winning as yourself. There's no other guys. If you take a loss, you you take, you have to take the blame yourself, so. And uh, once you win, now you get a lot of praises yourself, so, which I like, to, I like that, you know. Football, you know, I mean, there's a, it's about 12, 11 players in that team and any other sports as well, so that's what I liked about boxing and I was quite, it was quite tough as well at that time, you know, and especially when I was young. I liked, I liked all the hard stuff and... What sort of drives you to, to be successful? I think just to what you call secure yourself, you know, I mean, I've, okay, I've been boxing for the last uh, eight, no, ten years now coming up and you just want to be successful, I think that's about it. You know, it doesn't matter if you win titles or... You know, and uh, even even when titles and even screwing yourself up, even thinking after boxing, you know, you just want to screw yourself. You don't have to worry about, you know, I mean, you know, after boxing. That's your, that's my main aim anyway, in boxing. To get, be French to screw, you know. Yeah. I, I couldn't imagine myself doing anything else apart from boxing. Because yeah. this is all I've done. And uh, it's one of the things I love doing. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy doing it. It's not if I hate anything, obviously I come. Obviously, I fight complaints, you know, I mean, doing all oh, is hard, but, you know, I actually love doing it, you know, once I'm away from it, you miss it, so, you know, it's one of the things I wouldn't want to do anything else. With, with Cash, he does two strength programs a week. Uh, it's split into two. The first program we do is legs, shoulders, uh, and abs, of course. Uh, this one we've done today was the other part of the program, which was back, chest, and arms, and abs as well. Uh, we've also done a wee bit of hits program, just to give you an idea of what he does with the hits program, which is interval training, high intensity, so 20 second sprints, 40 second recovery. Uh, main idea with, with Cash is working in synergy, again, the, all the body parts working you know, people in the past or, or boxers, all you do is be bit of shoulders and a wee bit of arms. But, you know, the whole body's got to come in balance and it's like a spring effect. Well, we, we, we normally work in eight week cycles. Uh, the eight week cycle is to give the muscle time to adapt. So there's no point training, changing training every week or two weeks. So if you look at maybe from start to training with cash, probably about strength levels are about 50% from where they started, uh, you know, with a wee kind of thing with him saying some of the girls were lifting heavier, but he's changed that now. So about eight week program and then we change it because the muscle gets used to that work. So the motor neurons will fire in at the same angles or the same motor neurons. So we'll change it every eight weeks. Uh, the diet is the main one that, that takes up a lot of time getting the nutritional side right as well, yeah. which we do here as well. The fact that you know, maybe boxers in the past maybe relied on just maybe cutting water and plastic bags and saunas and then they found out that, you know, you're not getting the energy into the body quick enough. So things have moved on a wee bit certainly over the last 10 years. Uh, so I was working with Kevin McIntyre about 
15 years ago. So we were, some of the stuff that I was adopting then is coming in. But again, it, it's unusual. I've, I've dealt with footballers, professional football teams, and it was the same in the past, you know, trying to bring them up to the new range of thinking now. Uh, well, I've, I've been training over 40 years now. Uh, I was seven times Scottish bodybuilding champion, British Masters champion. Uh, I've owned the gym for coming up 30 years now, so I see every body type and every genetic range coming through my gym over the last 30 years. So you get to know when people come in the gym, what sort of program and what diet would, would be best suited for them. That's something you don't pick up in a two-week course, you know. Oh, if you look, I don't know, there's a documentary on, if you just look at Anthony Joshua, he's got a team, a sports scientist round about him now, you know, that are, are, are charting everything he does with his training, heart rate monitors, glycogen levels, eh, lactate levels, you know, that it's a whole science now. But again, th these things cost money, so to the extent as Anthony Joshua is in the region now, we can afford sports scientists. So at the end of the day, it's how far, even with the football teams now, you know, uh, you know, I had Celtic football team through here about 25 years ago, and they had two treadmills and a set of dumbbells in the gym at that time, that's how we came through here. So that's moved on quite substantially as well, you know. Probably Cash is the most committed boxer that I've worked with. It's totally focused. Uh, he's, he's, he's got a vision of where he wants to go. You know, he's you know he's never had a drink, smoke, never been in a nightclub. You know, in the west of Scotland, that's kind of unheard now. You know, but uh, and he's got that he's got a drive and an engine in him that, that just keeps going, which is great. You know, and uh, you know it's a pleasure for me to work with. Him. You know, and I've seen Lee fighting as well, not a couple of times, and it's going to be a close fight. But I just think. Cash with his last, you know, he's had five knockouts out of his last six fights. He's a puncher now, where maybe he wasn't before, but he can punch now. I think Lee's a good tactical boxer. Don't know whether he's maybe got that knockout punch, I think, that Cash has got. Again, he's got the size, he's got the reach of Cash and getting close enough. I think he can cause him problems. He'll be close. Two young guys, and, and no matter who wins, the two of them are going to go in and have great careers because they're they're young and they're up and coming, so and it, but it's great for Scotland as well. I was born in uh, Gujarat, were they? And uh, I stayed the whole of my life. And uh, and I stayed, I think I came here when I was about five or six to Glasgow. I can't, I can't really, to be honest, I would, I would like to say I remember, but I don't remember, the, I do remember coming here and that, my first first time we came here and that, but I can't remember too much of it. You know, and, you know, obviously, but you, you can't, I can't remember too much when I was young and, well, we've been here since, you know, and it's, you know, it's not been, it's been great. Not, yeah, not not, no, no, not at the moment, <laughs> but I'm, not, I'm quite happy, you know, I mean, I get most of my time with my mum. She looks after me, so, you know, which is great, you know. I leave, uh, it's less headache, you know what I mean, doing the washing and making my food. She makes most of my food, so, you know, so it's great for me. <laughs> I just have to just worry about training. Uh, you going to struggle when you move out? Oh, if, I think so, anyway. I think it'll be a shock to my system once I move out, you know. But I'm not going to move out yet anyway, it's going to be a while until that happens. I think probably some people uh, know this about you already, but your, your parents obviously don't go to the fights. No, um, they don't. That's just, never been, nah, never it's been just, the case, no, is it? No, they've not came to my amateur or professional fights, you know, and uh, I don't like them coming to me. It's just, I think I end up getting distracted and end up being too much on my mind. I like to just, to me it's business boxing, and that's just the way it does to me. You know, I like to just go and fight. I said, you know, and my mom watches the TV and my parents watch the TV and they're happy to do it, you know, so. Um, but no, I just, I think I was trying to get paranoid that they're there, you know, my parents are there watching me, you know. But, but I think if, I, but it's just one of the things, you know, they know they understand anyway, they're, ha they're happy to always see, they're happy to obviously go with it, you know. Yeah, yeah my wee brother's always there, you know, Sean, he's always, he's always, he's always there, you know, so. They'll never miss a fight, he's always there every fight, so. Yeah, the first three fights, you know, and, uh, I wasn't selling. I never even sold that many tickets to me. I didn't even sell any tickets to me. My first fight, second, I didn't. Do, first three fights didn't do well. And they always see with the end, you know. I mean, I, in Sarando Sporting Club, you know, they backed me. And uh, you know, I can't thank them enough, you know. And uh, you know, and ever after that, I just I think it was my fourth fight with Scotland. 
they haven't clearly took off on TV everything and you know I got my the amateur club obviously the club I was with at that time was uh, well still am with the Colin Bell show and his Dumbshire Boxing Club and a lot, a lot of boys in my club came and supported me and it's been they come to every fight now and they'll come spot me which is I can't tangle enough you know do you remember what the ticket sales were like when you were starting out? I wasn't a grand, so I even sold Renee to be honest. I just didn't. I didn't even have a fan base. I didn't even knew. I never knew what. I never knew what professional boxing was all about when I started off. And I thought all you had to do was turn up and fight, but it was a shock to my system, and I fell. A lot, I fell away from a wee bit, but then end up, end up, you know, build, build myself up and build a bit of fan base up the next year or so. Well, the next few years. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been it's been going great. Had a great few. Been having a great good few years in the last few years, you know. So, yeah. Do you think about sort of what could have been if you'd actually given it up? Yeah, you know, if I always if I gave it up, that was it. You know, I can't, I can't look back. You know, that would have been it. if I quit. I quit. You know, I couldn't. I can't change. I can't change the past, no man. You know, so, I saw somewhere that your mum helped persuade you. Yeah, she. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, she. I was gonna quit. Obviously, she told me that I'd, you can't let other people down. You know, I many if you quit, especially old trainers. So. He's a guy, you can't, you can't really, you know, you just can't quit just like that, so, you know, I can't thank her enough, obviously, <laughs> I'm here, yeah. you know, so, I... Uh, even chatting to Billy there, like, he was saying that he saw something sweet from a young age, like... Yeah, I was always determined, I always wanted, I always wanted to be a boxer, no matter what, I always wanted to be a fighter, and uh, that was it, you know, I would, I would put the dedication in, I found a good trainer, Craig Dixon, and we've been been together you know I mean for that well and I have a good manager as well so yeah. you know, everything's gone great um, um, have you thought about much what you would do after boxing at all not at the moment you know and uh, no, I've not really thought maybe I would, I'd like to get maybe something to do with boxing something maybe help out train some of the boys but I think that's what I like to maybe do but I wouldn't like to be the first trainer I would like to maybe obviously help maybe after I'm done maybe help create Craig with their boys or something. Yeah. I wouldn't like to be the first, you know, I'd like to just give my hand and, and learn, you know what I mean, learn my trade obviously as a trainer. If, if, if I ever have thought about doing it, you know, but I wouldn't, obviously that wouldn't be a full-time job for me, you know what I mean, you know, but I would like to do something after boxing, I would like to still be involved, but not as a first trainer to be honest. You see, I have goals, I've, you know, you obviously, you know, I've been a world champion at the end of the day, and I, but I just take a fight at a time, that's always been like that. And since my amateur fight, you know, my first one, I was just take take a fight at a time. And that's it, take a fight at a time. Even my my British Scottish, you know, you know, I've, I've always had the same attitude. Just take a fight at a time. Don't have to look past, you know, don't have to look past anybody and just train hard. And that's it. That's the way I've had the mentality in my as a fighter, you know. And I've never really, never really looked at other fights, you know. I'm really confident I'm gonna win the fight 100%, and he'd be the same as well. So. So, but this is the reason the fight's here because I'm comfortable winning it, so is he. Now, obviously, I, obviously, it's down in history. I, I was the first one to do it. First Asian Pakistani to win the British outright, so. And to win it and to win it outright was great for me to do that. And, uh, you know, I think that, that was my plan. My trainers and my managers to, once we won it, just win it outright. And uh, we've done that. The posters around the walls and uh, you're getting a few going. Uh, <laughs> I think mine's the, big, I think mine's the biggest one. Uh, <laughs> Just so, make sure it was a couple inches bigger. Uh, I thought I'd make sure it was sure one big. So, I, <laughs> so it's good as far as Hank Colin just got up short the hard work because I came here. I was not a decent batch, uh, amateur background, but I came here just worked hard and built myself up. And Hank Colin just put up to show the boys if you work hard, you can get you can get what you call it, out of it, you know what I mean? Yeah.